overnight growing national unrest. In New York City, dozens of looters seen kicking in windows and breaking into stores across midtown Manhattan. Macy's iconic flagship ransacked. Reports of fires set inside. The chaos coming after a day of peaceful protests across the city. America's major cities are filled with people demanding this country become more fair, more just. Protests turned destructive in downtown Seattle tonight. Here's what we know as of 10 o'clock. Protests started at about noon today in Seattle, but turned destructive right around 4 p.m. when someone lit a Seattle police cruiser on fire. Destroying property which can be replaced is not violence. Too many see the protests as the problem. People are worried about the protesters and the looters. And it's just people who are frustrated. They are frustrated and they are angry and they are out there and they're upset. You shouldn't be taking televisions. But I can't tell people how to react to this. I'm proud of the protests, and um, uh, I think it's part of the tradition of New York. Also tonight, we should let you know that 200 members of the Washington National Guard have been called up to come into Seattle. 75 have been deployed to Seattle tonight. The other 125 will arrive in the city tomorrow. All of this started earlier today with a peaceful protest at about noon just outside Seattle Police Headquarters. People protesting the death of George Floyd. How long do you think Seattle in those few blocks looks like this? I don't know, we could have the summer of love. Do not get it twisted and think that, oh, this is some something that has not never happened before and then this is so terrible and where are we and these savages and all of that. This is how this country was started. If in fact there is going to be federal officers or federal law enforcement come to this area, it is not going to be a pretty situation. And please show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful, because I can show you that outraged citizens are the ones who have made America what she is and led to any major milestones. They're here to yell, criticize, blame, and shame. Remember, they want to see this police department defunded or even abolished. Short of some type of major concession, they're not going to leave voluntarily. And we should point out that Washington is an open carry state. And no doubt, uh, some of these protesters are armed, Anderson. So uh, you have to worry about the potential for bloodshed, the potential for violence. You look in the city of Chicago, there are nine children who died by gun violence, by black on black gun violence with, uh, from June 20th all the way to today. The Black Lives Matter movement has said nothing about this what does that have thing? to do you with know, equality, though, Terry? Um, the Black Lives Matter movement was started because it was talking about police brutality. If you want an all Black Lives Matter movement that talks about gun violence in communities, including, you know, black communities, then start that movement with that name. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about. The Black Lives Matter movement is about police brutality and injustice in that manner, not about what's happening in black neighborhoods. <laughs> What began in other states is now happening in Colorado. At the entrance to Druid Hill Park, George Washington draped in red paint. Protesters toppled statues and vandalized the music concourse area Friday night. Videos posted to social media show the moment Francis Scott Key was dragged to the ground. Protesters knocked down the statue of former president and Civil War general Ulysses S. Grant and the statue of Junipero Serra. One man climbs onto the pedestal of the statue and dumps a bucket of red paint on the head of Christopher Columbus. The other man spray paints the word genocide below his feet. He defends statues. He ignores the substance of the message and wholly misses the mark. We have to reimagine what policing looks like. Reimagining policing, reimagining our public safety. Reimagine a citizen-led approach. You can begin to reimagine law enforcement. Yeah, Democratic cities are in chaos right now. Is this what you want from Joe Biden? And they're going to take your country away and they're taking down the statues. And crime is rising crime is as rising. they defund police. Oh, my gosh, it's so bad. And they're defunding police. It's like. Whew. 
Well, Mary, it almost felt like a war zone earlier this morning. Shattered glass littered the sidewalk and the smell of burning debris filled the air. Tonight, nearly every building around downtown is boarded up to protect it from further damage, while these signs remind protesters who the violence is hurting. Destruction at every corner in downtown Kenosha. Overnight, cell phone video captures looters smashing out the storefront windows of businesses at 56th and 7th, then ransacking the merchandise inside. We've served a lot of people, been good to people, and this is what they, this is the thanks you get. So, you know, it's sad. It's sad. The owner of Dale's Jewelers says thieves took approximately $200,000 worth of jewelry and caused another $200,000 more in damage. All this is doing is bringing us to the brink of a civil war. The violence stemming from protests Sunday night in response to the shooting of a black man by a Kenosha police officer. Rioters also set vehicles ablaze. City garbage trucks burned feet from the county courthouse and flames engulfed the parking lot and office of this dealership. The aftermath shows more than 50 cars torched. I don't think that the people that are perpetrating all this de destruction are from Kenosha. And when they come here and destroy all this stuff, they're going to leave and leave us holding the bag. Two people were killed during another night of Black Lives Matter protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Investigators say it may have been a vigilante attack carried out by a young white man. Police have arrested a teenage suspect after two people were fatally shot during a third night of unrest in a community already on edge. This disturbing video posted online overnight showing a person carrying a rifle and shots heard in the streets. <laughs> It's not good that a 17-year-old vigilante, arguably a domestic terrorist, picked up a rifle, drove to a different state to shoot people. The vast majority of protests in Kenosha have been peaceful, and the violence has come from an outside Trump supporter, Kyle Rittenhouse, the armed teenage vigilante. Uh, shooting wildly, running around, uh, acting like a rent -a -cop. Radicalized by Trumpism, took his AR-15 to Kenosha and became a killer. Rittenhouse is basically what you would have had in a school shooter. Cross state lines to supposedly protect property? No, he was going out to shoot people. Should we really be surprised? The 17 year old Proud Boys fan believed that he had the perfect right to cross state lines and protect property with the AR 15 he got because he thought it was cool. The fact that white supremacists roam the halls of Congress freely and celebrate this little murderous white supremacist and the fact that he gets to walk the streets freely, it lets you know these people have access to instituting uh, laws. They represent the legislative branch of this country. Here we have a 17-year-old kid, underage, said he bought an AR-15 because he thought it was cool. He drove across state, had his mother drive him across state lines. He appointed himself a militia member. He goes around and he ends up unloading, what, 60 rounds. Oh, well, okay, now it's just open season. Like, if, if I'm walking around and, and I'm a white nationalist, you know, coward little kid with an AR-15, and I see somebody drive by with a Black Lives Matter bumper sticker and I feel threatened, I can open fire. In the court of public opinion, they're really arguing that white men, especially white men with a gun, are allowed and have the space to defend and protect a country and a social order that keeps them at the top and a country that they stole from indigenous folks and built with black people's labor. On August 25th of last summer, Rittenhouse went downtown to stand guard over a car lot. Here's the context. The night before, police in Kenosha had done nothing as the mob burned businesses, including another car lot, all the way to the ground. Saw the videos of the riots and the arson going on. Um, what did you think of it? It was upsetting because Kenosha is my community, um, and I just was upset seeing my community up in flames. So you said to the people who own the car lot, I want to protect your cars, and they said yes, please. Um, I, I said, hey, if you, I, I asked if they needed any help, and they said yes, if you can. And what we found here was that this defunding movement led to an uprising by law-abiding citizens who said, "The hell with defunding. We want to be protected in our community. Put more money on the table, or we'll find other politicians to take your place." the actions of vigilantes like Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, we're, we're looking at all of it. Uh, that was an interesting situation. You saw the same tape as I saw. And uh, he was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like. And he fell. And then they very violently attacked him. And it was something that we're looking at right now. And it's under investigation. But 
uh, I guess he was in very big trouble. He would have been, I, he probably would have been killed. This afternoon, the jury acquitted Kyle Rittenhouse on all charges. The jury affirmed what was obvious from the very beginning. He acted in self-defense. It is to tell the current and future Kyle Rittenhouses of the world that they can engage in white vigilantism and be let off for it, be defended and protected for uh, perpetuating white supremacy. The Kyle Rittenhouse acquittal today, not guilty on all counts, did not happen in a cultural vacuum. There's some alarming context to this moment worth considering and talking about. Just last week, the Department of Homeland Security released its latest bulletin, warning Americans again of the ongoing threat posed by domestic violent extremists. We should also point out conservative media for many, many months have been priming its audience for this moment, framing Rittenhouse as a hero when we're watching the criminal justice system at work, that it was designed to do exactly what it did today. Gun laws helped to enhance the design to allow this verdict to happen today. Today we are being asked to say that it is legal and to respect the rule of law because a white boy deputized himself and went out and terrorized people who were actually you know, using their constitutional right to protest. This is also white America's reckoning with which version of whiteness is it going to choose? If there have always been white victims of white supremacy. As far as I can tell, the only reason why any of this is allowed is because of the whiteness of it all. This country was built on the idea of, of that white men had a, a, a particular kind of freedom and a particular kind of citizenship that only they have that gives, you know, from the slave catchers on, the right to inflict violence um, in the name of protecting property. The next time there's a, uh, a protest of some sort, and it may get politicized, that gun, o gun owners with a certain ideology may feel incentivized now, may feel even emboldened. What some may take from this verdict is that vigilante justice prevailed. There was no outrage about the violence, the vandalism, the destruction, and the burning of cities that was occurring in cities for an entire summer, if not more. In Portland and Seattle, those things continued on for months after the, the George Floyd riots. But there was no outrage from the media about that and the damage it caused. Many people uh, just learned for the first time you know, that the three deranged lunatics that Kyle shot, they were white. You know, and when, when lunatics attack you, when child, you know, rapists attack you, you have the right to defend yourself. This had nothing to do with race and everything exactly. to do with the individual standing up against the mob. Three biggest news outlets in Brazil, not a year ago, but this week in covering the trial, explicitly stated that the people Kyle Rittenhouse shot were black and they had to retract it. There wasn't just them. The Independent in the UK did the same thing. One of the leading uh, Dutch papers did the same thing. Obviously, they're watching the American media that deliberately cultivated this false narrative from the start that he was a white supremacist, and so therefore they assumed that he went there and shot black people, which is what you would do if you were a white supremacist. The media misled not just the American public, but the entire world. This case has nothing to do with race. Um, it never had anything to do with race. It had to do with the right to self-defense. Fans. Prosecutors have had all of this evidence, most of it exculpatory for more than a year, which invites the question, why did they charge? Right. I think the right. obvious answer is that, that they fell victim to public pressure, the woke mob and the media that drove a false narrative. The, it really is the case that the liberal left in the United States has completely lost the capacity to understand any significant events in the world without seeing things through a prism of race. Everything yeah. is racist. Everything is white nationalist. Everything is white supremacist. Everyone with whom they disagree is guilty of all those things. So even in a case where on its face race has nothing to do with it, it's a white person who shot three white people, yes. all of whom did some form of aggression against him, they still end up imposing it because it's the only way they can understand the world. And by doing that, they gain a lot of power. They get people to think they're on the right side of history by always agreeing with them. They're trying to define America as a failure, and its number one failure is along the lines of race. And if they can convince enough of the American public that this country is irredeemably racist, they now have a justification to rewrite the Constitution, start this thing all over, and make us more like China 
That's the end game. 